We'll continue on with the 12.10 derivatives. Here we have Zubuntu, which is more the system for older machines, but not too old because there's a nicer system called Lubuntu. But yeah, this is good, say, if you've got like 500 meg RAM in your system and you want something that's still quite speedy. And it's even good if you want an alternative to Unity. You can see it comes with a more classic interface. But before we go too far, I just want to point out something that, that Layark111 mentioned to me. There's this issue of AMD graphics cards, well, the older graphics cards, that they've dropped support from the Catalyst driver. But there's this workaround on Unix men. So considering Zubuntu is more ideal for older machines, it's just a nice target audience to be affected by this bug. <laughs> so like Kubuntu, not much has changed in this release. The same basic interface is still the same. A bit of notice we have a nice new wallpaper. So with Zubuntu, you've got a launcher at the bottom of the screen, which you can hover over to make it appear. There's a few shortcuts in here. But otherwise, you've got the traditional application menu at the top. On the top right-hand side, we've got the volume control, network, calendar, desktop switcher, and shutdown menu. There are a couple of problems in this release. Namely, if we go for the file manager, the Funar file manager, when it open quickly there, but your first time opening it on a system reboot will be quite laggy. In fact, it takes well, almost a minute or two to open. Another problem in this release, and this was something that Night Spirit Hacker mentioned to me on one of the other videos, that if you try and edit the menus, it just doesn't take effect. So if you try and move any of the icons up and down, no, nothing. New separator maybe, no. New item, well we might be able to do a new item, but basically you can't edit the menu particularly well. It just doesn't work. So yeah, definitely a few issues within this release of Zubuntu. Let's take a look at what it comes with. Right at the top you've got links to web browser and email reader. So the web browser is Firefox 16.0.1. In your mail reader is Thunderbird. I'll skip setting up an email account. There's uh, no need to do it right now. So let's just close all that. So under accessories, well, there's quite a few things here. I'm not going to read all those out. But I'm just going to mention about this one, the application finder. This was something I complained about was missing before in Zubuntu, that there's no search like Unity. Well, yeah, there's this searcher here, as some people pointed out, but it's just not as convenient. You press Alt F2, and you could start typing something like, I don't know, because there is a program called Minesweeper. Mines. So yeah, it's just not as good as Unity Searcher. Anyway, right, carrying on. Under games we have only a couple of simple games, Minds and Sudoku. Under graphics we've got Document Viewer, GFUM Image Organizer, Ristretto Image Viewer and Simple Scan. Under Internet we've got Firefox Web Browser, we've already, as we've already seen, Pigeon Internet Messenger, Thunderbird we've already seen, Transmission and the Xchat IRC. Under Multimedia, so we've got Gmusic Browser, Parole Movie Player, Pulse Audio Volume Control and XF Burn. I do think Gmusic Browser is very dull and boring and it doesn't even load the images right for the albums that I've put on here. Take me away. But you do at least get the lyric information, well, for some songs, let's, there you go. Yeah, it's a bit dull and basic compared to uh, some of the other music players that there are available. Under Office, so I've then got a lightweight writer application, that's Abbey Word. For some reason it doesn't have Numeric anymore. I wonder if I had a bit of trouble trying to squeeze everything onto a CD-sized ISO. Hmm. Could be. Right, under System, so we've got, uh, you've got the Gigolo Network Connector, iBus Settings, uh, Synaptic I installed separately, it doesn't come with that. And lastly we've got a Task Manager. And we'll just open up Task Manager and take a look how it's doing. After looking at this system for a while, we're up to 30% of 1 gig of RAM used, around 300 meg, and it's using very little of the CPU. So as you can see, it's quite nice and lightweight there. And the last application we have here is the Ubuntu Software Center. It takes a little while to open. You see you've got the application ratings and reviews, and you can even install paid for applications. I don't know why I clicked on the Minecraft launcher. Uh, stay away from that. Here's what I thought of Zubuntu 12.10. It's easy enough to use, except there's no auto prompt for driver install. So it's under software sources now, which is not the most obvious place to go looking for it. You might need that if, depending on the graphics card or Wi-Fi card. 
So ease of installation, yeah, it's pretty easy to install. You've got a graphical installer and it's easy enough to dual boot with Windows. The styling, it looks pretty good, except there's no transparency effects like you would find in Kubuntu. Boot up speed, yep, it's pretty quick. Responsiveness, yep, quick enough. Number of bugs, yeah, we've lost a few points here. There's the overall issue with 12.10 where the driver support for older AMD cards has now been dropped. There is a workaround like I mentioned earlier. It got Funar slow to start up on initial boot up, but any time you're using it after that, it's actually quite quick. And there's the last one there, is menu editor doesn't work properly. A selection of pre-installed applications. Well, you don't get the proprietary codecs pre-installed, but they're easy enough to install during the system installer, or you can install Zubuntu restricted extras. And I think it could have had the G numeric like it has done in previous releases. I know they put a lighter weight office suite in there, but they only put in Abbey Word this time. A number of applications available is pretty good, but there could always be more. It does come with 32 and 64-bit versions. So good point, it's a lot more stable than Ubuntu 12.10 and it's an ideal system for older, less powerful machines. The bad point is that some of the lightweight applications are really basic. That music player, oh dear, that could have been a lot better I reckon. So overall, 78%. So thanks for watching, see you later.